Are you tired of constantly stalling your dirt bike? Well, I want to show you three simple ways to help reduce stalling and then a bonus tip at the end to really solve the long-term problem when it comes to stalling. So the first one is changing your gearing. And when I mean gearing, I mean the sprockets. So you got the front sprocket, which is the counter shaft sprocket and the rear sprocket. And depending on which type of dirt bike you have, uh, whether it's a trail bike, enduro bike, or motocross bike, the gearing in the transmission can make a big difference on how easy it is to get going or prevent stalling in first gear. So for example, a trail bike, the first gear is going to be really low, meaning it's only going to take you riding up to three or four miles an hour before you can fully let out the clutch and put your feet on the pegs without stalling. Whereas a motocross bike, first gear is a lot taller, so you have to slip the clutch and get going seven, eight miles an hour before you can let the clutch all the way out and get on the bike without stalling. So this will make a bigger difference if you're on a race bike with a tall first gear. So making the gearing shorter will make it easier because it'll reduce the speed that you need to go to get going without the bike stalling. So let's say you have a motocross bike and it takes you accelerating up to seven miles an hour to fully let out the clutch. If you go with a larger rear sprocket, so more teeth or a smaller front sprocket with less teeth, this is going to shorten the gearing, meaning that seven miles an hour might be reduced to six or five miles an hour, making it easier uh, to use the clutch without stalling. Now the second way to help reduce stalling is by getting the jetting tuned or dialed in. If you have a fuel injected bike and it's all stock, you probably aren't gonna have a problem with this uh, until you start modifying it and don't change the fuel injection tuning system. But if you have a carburetor and it's not tuned properly, uh, whether it's too lean or too rich, this will make the bike harder to idle and it won't have as good of throttle response, especially at low RPM. So this makes the bike stutter or bog if the jetting is off. So once you get the jetting tuned, dialed in, this is going to make it, the bike start easier and it's going to have much smoother, more reliable and easier to control throttle response. And if you have a two stroke or four stroke, I have a free guide on how to tune the air screw or fuel screw within just a few minutes if you think that your jetting is off. Now the third easy way to help reduce stalling is by adjusting the idle and that is the engine idle speed. So if you're in neutral or if you have the clutch pulled in and you're not touching the throttle, that is your idle. So if you turn the idle up, this will help reduce stalling because it's essentially like aiding you and giving it more throttle or gas to start out. So if it's at a lower RPM, the engine is already at a lower RPM, you're more likely to stall. Whereas if you increase the idle speed, it's going to take longer, a split second longer, but enough to make a difference for the engine to rev back down and stall it. So simply turning your engine idle up is a way to help pr prevent that. I don't recommend it long term uh, if the engine idle speed is already correct, but it can definitely help boost your confidence uh, if you're just starting out and frustrated with stalling. While these are three easy ways to help reduce it, they're really just band-aid fixes. And if you wanna fix the root cause of why you're stalling, you should check out this video, which will show you how to prevent stalling long term so you don't have to keep starting your bike over and over again.